Okay, P Street Garage. I'm back out on the 62 Comet. And uh, in the last video, you saw that I installed this transmission. And uh, this car runs and drive. Runs and drives, I should say. It doesn't drive great, but it does drive. Uh, what I want to work on now is, like I mentioned before, I got this uh, alternator. It's a more modern style alternator, as in probably something from the 70s or 80s. I'm not even sure what it is. And what I want to do is I want to hook it up, uh, obviously, so I can charge my battery. Uh, but this car originally would have had a generator. And everything comes through this external voltage regulator here. And all my wiring I've been working on, uh, I have a wiring diagram for this car. Uh, and i kind of been following that. So up to this point, I basically, I mean, this looks like a cluster here, but... Uh, you can sort these up by color and size and everything else and I kind of have an idea if this was a generator what wires would uh, what wires would get hooked up uh, but that's not the case and so what the plan is I want to take this alternator out I'm gonna send it out to a shop uh, there's a shop in town here that deals in specifically starters and motors and that kind of thing uh, I'm gonna send this out to them I'll get them to test it and uh, they'll be able to confirm to me if this has an internal uh, voltage regulator. I think it does, but I'm not 100% sure and I don't even know if this is any good. So before I start hooking wires and fiddling, uh, you know, before I do any of this nonsense, I'm going to send it to them and uh, they can tell me at least if it's good and they'll probably, e probably uh, even be able to tell me what it is and maybe even how I should hook it up. If it's a Ford style as in the one wire hookup it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I talked to my buddy Ed. Uh, Ed has uh, two channels on YouTube. He's known as uh, Whoop Ass Racing and he races, uh, he races a Miata that he's got all built up and he also has another channel he's called Mr. E and he does uh, watch reviews and he's a mechanic by trade and I was uh, I was chatting about this with him and uh, that's kinda what he was saying if it's a if it's a Ford alternator uh, the one wire hookup is the simplest and the voltage regulator the external voltage regulator can be eliminated so I'm hoping that that's what this is anyway enough babbling let's get this out and uh, We'll bring it up to the shop and have it tested. All right. Okay, well, you gotta love old cars. This took five minutes. So there's my, there's my uh, alternator. It sounds good. Uh, now, what it is, I don't know. It is a Motocraft, so that is a Ford. It's a Ford part. Uh, that would be the big cable for the battery, I would say. And then you'd need a feed off of the ignition. Now I see that's where I, I'm not sure. There's a ground. There's a couple of different poles. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna get those guys to give me a little run through on what's what. And I'm sure if I clean this up a little bit, because this has been painted in black, as you can see. Uh, if I was to clean this up, there I can see there's there's letters there that I can't make out right now. But anyway, there she is. Let's get this up to the shop. It's called Diesel Auto and Electric. Let's get this up there and uh, see what they say. Uh, maybe it's good, uh, maybe it's bad. If it's no good, then we'll just get a new one. I don't think these would be very expensive. All right, let's, uh, let's take this with us and go get it checked out. Okay, so the uh, work continues uh, with my alternator. I just came back from Diesel Auto Electric and uh, I brought it into these guys and they took one look at this and, and they were able to tell me uh, this is the kind of alternator that uses an external voltage regulator so this was not one of those ones built in so I would not be able to do the single wire hookup also uh, they didn't even bother to uh, to test it because uh, well to test the alternator uh, it's uh, $25 and uh, 
So I would have went that route, except that luckily the technician there uh, explained to me that uh, although this alternator is kind of what I would be looking for because my car has an external voltage regulator, uh, because the car originally came with a DC uh, generator, uh, nothing would be compatible. So there's nothing really that we could do with this. I suppose there's stuff you could do, but it probably would have cost more than what it was worth. So instead, uh, they showed me this thing here. AC Delco. Yes, General Motors. So I've got this GM alternator. And uh, $120. And they even provided me with the, the pulley that I will need for the serpentine belt hookup. Uh, just in case uh, I don't, I'm not able to get this one off. Um, I'm probably not even going to bother. I can exchange this for a core. This is worth about $7. So I can bring this back. Uh, I'll just have to install this on here. But the beauty with this uh, AC Delco, uh, this is a true one wire hookup, as they say. So uh, it couldn't be any simpler. It doesn't need an outside feed. It needs nothing. You can hook up uh, one wire to the positive uh, of the battery and the other wire is a ground. That's it, that simple. The only small, small hiccup is that, uh, let's see. The only tiny hiccup, if you compare the two, is that the ears are a little bit narrower than these ones. I think these ones are pretty close. A little bit narrower here. But um, my old setup did come with a spacer. I'm going to have to measure the difference or take my spacer. I'm going to have to come up with something to make the difference. Excuse that noise. I'll have to come up with something to make that difference. Uh, maybe a few washers up here might work. A couple washers to make up this difference. And maybe I'll make a new sleeve or throw a whack of washers in. Probably try to make a sleeve. It might look better than a bunch of washers. But anyway. This should be an easy solution, uh, providing it bolts in and it looks like it should. I do say it looks like it should because I haven't tried it. So for now, let's, uh, I'll put this in the vise gently and uh, I'll try to get this nut off. We'll get this pulley off and we'll install this style of pulley. And uh, we'll see if we have a charging system for the car. Okay. Okay. I was just able to break the nut free on here. I used a three quarter inch uh, wrench and uh, with the Allen key in the middle here. So this came off pretty easy. So let's take this off. This should just slide off of here. Hopefully this is all compatible. Let's try this. Uh, I'm sure we don't run out of threads here. Okay. Looks kind of good. Let's put this nut on. And uh, I'll tighten this up. And then uh, we'll take this home, put it in the car. And hopefully with the spacer and uh, basically a couple straps, we should be making power for the uh, we should be making power for the battery. All right, let me put this down. I'll tighten this up. I need two hands for that, and uh, let's throw this in the car. Okay. Well, it's the next day. A little bit windy. Let's see if this alternator will fit. Uh, I got a couple of these uh, grounding straps. Uh, so we'll tie one of the we'll tie one of those to the battery. We'll tie the other one to the chassis somewhere. I've made uh, some kind of a spacer here to go in between. So hopefully I measured right, uh, and this is going to fit. All right, let's see if it'll bolt up. Okay, well here's my alternator installed. 
Um, there's my spacer that worked out pretty good. There was a couple of interference items. Again, this is a GM alternator. I had to push the uh, oil dipstick tube. Uh, the oil dip dipstick tube used to be in here somewhere and it was kind of in the way so I just had to push that on this side of the bolt. That seems okay. Uh, I got my belt on. I got my grounding strap on the bottom pole down to the chassis and here I've got my other strap uh, to the positive of the uh, battery and then I just got to hook this on here onto the red pole apparently. Uh, of course I need a nut for this. I don't have a nut but for right now I'm going to try to start the car make sure this is clear. Let's try, try to start the car. I'm going to check the voltage and uh, then if I can keep this thing running I will throw this uh, cable onto that pole and we should see our battery voltage jump. Um, and that'll be the telltale sign that we're charging. Um, okay, no guarantees, but uh, let's try to start this up and see how this goes. No alternator. 13, that's with no alternator. Running on the battery only. That's a good battery. It's been charging for a long time. Let's throw the uh, throw the alternator on. Alternator hooked up. Thirteen point two. So. The alternator is charging my battery. I just need to uh, get a nut to hold that on there now. Yeah, 13.4, going up. So that's good, I got a good system. Pull this off now. Okay, this is some success. Uh, I'm gonna let this run for a bit, and just to demonstrate how the battery is gonna suck this down because there's no alternator running this car; it's running straight off the battery. temperature. Question for you guys. Um, this is an old engine. Uh, it's in from the 70s or 80s. I think 70s. I did buy it with the serpentine belt hookup. I'm going to back away here a bit. Uh, as you can see, I've had comments before suggesting that Whoever did this serpentine setup, this might be a mess up. And is my water pump rotating in the right direction? If somebody could please tell me. I'm gonna try to kill two birds with one stone here. I got my alternator installed and it's charging. At the same time, the engine's running good. So I'm just panning down on this. From the front, everything is going clockwise including the water pump and with a serpentine belt with the grooves on the inside in my opinion the back side of the belt should be riding uh, this water pulley so uh, I'm not sure as I said this car does drive it drives barely um, but when I say it drives I haven't even taken it around the block yet 
So we're getting there. We're getting there. We've got a running car. We've got a charging system. So what should we do next? If somebody could answer this question about the water pump, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. Because someone commented on this in the past. And like I said, I've never ran this car long enough to see if it overheats, to see if it runs. Uh, it runs correctly. I mean, it sounds good. It idles pretty good. Um, if somebody wants to tell me uh, the deal with this water pump and what should we do next? I think maybe start throwing some trim on here. I got lots of trim to go on there. I think that would really dress it up. So, it's been running for a minute or so. Where's my alternator right now? Or sorry, my battery. on some trim next and uh, if you guys if anybody knows out there an old Ford 302 my water pump is this turning the right way thanks for watching